Welcome everybody to the Thursday night showcase from the KFC Yum Center in Louisville. You're watching the ACC on ESPN. A pair of current one seeds, second ranked UConn, third ranked Louisville. Jeff Walls has never defeated the UConn Huskies in 14 tries. He'll get a chance for a signature victory tonight. Both of these teams on Charlie Creed's one line. Notre Dame, despite a loss to unranked North Carolina on Sunday, remains on the one line. And a key game tonight for both of these teams who come in with win streaks. Adam Amin, Carol Lawson, Rebecca Lobo, Holly Rowe in just a moment as well. Gino Ariema has gone as far to say there are some flaws to this UConn team. We've seen them at times, but they've rattled off seven straight wins since the loss to Baylor. Yeah, the last time Connecticut played a top 10 team was that loss to Baylor, but that was a month ago, and this is a much different Connecticut team. They learned from that loss that they need to pick up the pace. As a result, they've been pressing a lot. They needed another consistent offensive threat. Sophomore Megan Walker has become that. Tonight, another measuring stick. The coaches will see how far the team has come. It's such a small sample size of UConn regular season sure. losses over the years, or losses in general, but when you look at them, usually on the opposing side, there's a prolific guard performance, and if Louisville doesn't have a prolific guard, they do have one. I mean, Asia Durr, she's terrific. Uh, the lefty is so smooth, and she has the ability to score on multiple defenders. I think it's really important for Asia Durr and Louisville that she gets off to a good start, particularly from beyond the arc. Let's go over for more with Asia Durr for Holly, with Holly Rowe. And she is creeping up the charts as well. Not only is she a good shooter, she's a great scorer. She can put the ball on the court. She's deadly from the three-point range, but she's becoming more of a facilitator. Look at the names in that Mount Rushmore of great players of Louisville. With 32 more points, she will pass Shoni Schimmel. That is saying something. We'll see if she can do it tonight against the good defense of the UConn Huskies. And Asia Dirt did not play on Sunday against Pitt. She was dressed and ready to go, but Jeff Wall said she was going to rest a little bit of soreness in her knee. Could have played if they needed her, but Louisville got off to a great start against the struggling Panthers, so Durr did not have to play. She got a chance to rest over the course of the week, and we'll get another crack at Connecticut. Fifth straight time, it's a top five meeting between Louisville and UConn. Bianca Dunham and Nafisa Collier for the tip. Louisville won the first meeting all time back in the 1993 NCAA tournament sophomore year for one Rebecca Lobo ever since then 17 straight UConn victories over Louisville most of them in dominant fashion Megan Walker off target Collier with the rebound and the putback and a foul it's just one possession and it's just one foul, but one of the things Jeff Walls was talking about was not having certain players get in foul trouble because of their defensive prowess. And Jones is one of those players for him. And so to get a foul on the first possession it is not ideal for Louisville defensively. In Louisville's lone loss of the season to number one at the time, Notre Dame, they racked up a season high 28 fouls. Jasmine Jones is one of those players in trouble. Sam to get Louisville on the board. Yeah, what a great job attacking pressure. Rebecca, you talked about it in the open about UConn and extending that pressure. They've been doing more of it. They have a roster that's equipped to do it with their athleticism, but great job by Louisville to counteract that pressure with aggressiveness of their own. That was Gino Oriana's fear against that pressure that Louisville would have the ability to break it for layups. Shot clock inside of five for Katie Lou Samuelson. Well, that ball was tipped to Walker, and she got it to Kristen Williams. Crystal Dangerfield for three. A second chance opportunity again. And Crystal Dangerfield's been playing out of her mind lately. Sam Furing throwing it deep, looking for Durr, and it's thrown away. But Walker was on the sideline when she grabbed it. Already a little frustration for Gino Ariema, the winner of 1,045 games. Only Pat Summit and Tara Vanderveer, whose Stanford team is at Cal tonight, have more wins all time. UConn sitting back in his own defense. Coach Ariema telling us this is a game where we might need to play a ton of D zone. And how do you get a team out of a zone? Hitting 
shots like that. Erica Carter, a 44% shooter who's been struggling scoring the last couple of games, knocks it down. Samuelson, Williams, and Dangerfield all touching it. And a foul called on to Fisa Collier. Connecticut has not been a great offensive rebounding team this season. Nafisa Collier trying to get in there, get an extra possession. Too much contact. UConn does average 37 paint points per game. Louisville is only allowing 28 paint points per game. They've yet to allow 40 in a game this year defensively. Carter again. Deering tried to tip it and a whistle and a foul called against Connecticut. You know, this is, this is going to be interesting to watch, I think, if, if Louisville can make it a habit to go hard to the offensive glass. Yeah. Because when you're a team that plays a ton of man and, and not a ton of zone, one of the things that's really hard to do is check people out defensively. Because now it's an area, it's not a player. The other thing is we talked at length about this year's UConn team, just the composition of it. It's not a big team. They don't have the length that they enjoyed a season ago. And so if Louisville can make some hay in terms of getting some second chance opportunities, that could go a long way to helping them contend with this Connecticut offense. Walker picked up the UConn foul, their second. Williams into the body of Furing with the finish, the freshman. That pressure from UConn trying to trap Jasmine Jones. Carter to Dunham and a foul on Katie Lou Samuelson for the back side. That's early in the fight, but uh, I'm chalking up the win to Louisville against UConn's pressure. I mean, they've been able to get where they want to go. Uh, they've been able to, to get to the rim. And Gino or Emma said, you know, it's not just getting steals out of the pressure. We want to quicken the pace. We want our opponent to take quicker shots, but they don't want him to be layups, and he doesn't want his team to get into foul trouble as a result of it. Well, the other thing about, about fouls and free throws, guys, is it, it's the best elixir against a team that runs yeah. offensively because it's it's even easier to get back or it should be in theory than a made shot because you can get back and set your defense and what is UConn so devastatingly good in is transition because of all the shooters that they have and the capable ball handlers here is Samuelson one of the best shooters all time in UConn history I do challenge you to get elixir in a second time in a telecast <laughs> Dunham missed it. Jones followed it up. And Louisville on the push. Guess what we call an elixir bucket. <laughs> <laughs> we expected some high octane, some high pace. We're getting it early with 21 points in the first three minutes. Here is Walker. To me, she's vital. This is a player who got those same shots against Baylor early and missed them. She's a much more confident player, though, even though it's just been a month since that Baylor game. There's a lob to Dunham. Backing on Collier. Slips past her one more. Rebecca, you were talking about Megan Walker, who is as talented as she can be frustrating to Gene Hariema at times, but she's really stepped up as of late. And confidence comes from being able to produce, not only in games, but in practice. They've talked about her practice habits improving, her effort improving, and the results are there. Walker with her first two career double-doubles. They've come in the last four games. Nice strip by Crystal Dangerfield. Knocked it off the leg of Jasmine Jones. And this is what Dangerfield has been able to provide on the defensive end, the quick hands. Great play. It, it really is. And they, they put Crystal Dangerfield consistently on the opponent's top perimeter threat. She's on Asia Dirt tonight when they're in man. And she's somebody that they count on a lot defensively to bring pressure and not allow the offensive player to get good looks. Here's Dangerfield, 4-3. Collier tipped it, but right to Dunham. Louisville looks for its first lead of this opening quarter. 
Last year when these two teams met, it was 24 to 6 after one quarter, UConn had the lead. Louisville played right with Connecticut the rest of the way, but that early start is what allowed Connecticut to get the win. Good block by Bianca Dunham, and that'll take us to a timeout. 25 points in five minutes. It's going to be fun tonight. So you are looking at the new ACC Network Louisville Athletics control room. They have two huge control rooms. They are going to produce 178 ACC and Louisville events out of this building. College students can come and get experience learning how to be broadcasters. They already told me that one football player already signed with them because he wants to be a broadcast major. So way to go, Louisville, with a gorgeous new complex that we're going to be doing games from. Can't wait for the ACC Network to start up this coming fall. My Forsberg, one of our officials, has a foul called against Erica Carter. That'll be the second Louisville foul, the first on the redshirt senior from L.A. Jeff Wall is politicking early with my Forsberg. The shooting start on both sides. Walker battling and travel. Good defense by Carter. Some contact early. It eventually ends as a throw. And it was good defense by Carter. And kind of walking that line a little bit because she had just picked up her first foul. Yeah. And we talked about, remember, how foul trouble plagued Louisville in that loss to Notre Dame in South Bend. Some of their key contributors. The two players Jeff Walls mentioned this morning that he couldn't have on the bench with fouls, Jasmine Jones and Erica Carter. Dana Evans has been a spark all season off the bench, and she gives Louisville its first lead, the sophomore from Indiana. She did a really nice job, for the most part, handling the offense on Sunday against Pitt when Durr was rested. We've got Carter guarding Collier. It's Walker over Furing for three. Second bucket for Megan Walker. It's a different Megan Walker. It's, I mean, the, what a difference the, the last month has made for the sophomore in terms of her confidence. Carter, deep three. Oh, in and out. Here comes Dangerfield on the push. Kylie Shook is in the game as well. This is one of the bigger lineups that Louisville can put out there. That'll be a foul on the floor on the reach-in. That'll go against Louisville on Kylie Shook. Speaking of the ACC, you're going to see a couple of big-time uh, ball games. Duke out of conference taking on St. John's. UNC is going to be here to take on the suddenly red-hot Louisville men's team. And Kentucky and Florida, always a great rivalry. Triple header there, and it's going to keep on going. About five games on Saturday. Indiana, Michigan State, and then number one Tennessee on the road at AM all day on ESPN. Don't click anywhere else. Carter picks up for second foul as Samuelson will go to the line to finish the N1. And she has to be smarter than that. And, and I know that you're battling down there, undersized. And it, it's hard to do. Katie Lou Samuelson has terrific size, but sometimes you have to concede the basket. Yep. You just keep your hands straight up. You concede the basket knowing that your minutes on the floor are more important than not trying to contest that so physically. Durr trying to get on the board. Off target. Long lead for Williams, who saves it and muscles it up. Shook grabs the rebound. Oh, big screen by Kylie Shook. Knocked down Samuelson, and she picks up her second foul. She is a key contributor in the front court off the bench for Louisville. They're smart trying to get the ball to Asia Durr because that's a tough matchup for Samuelson with the shoulder right into Katie Lou's face. Jeff Walls will leave Shook out there. Averages about 19 minutes a game off the bench. Dangerfield, the runner. Let's see if Louisville can get points in transition with Durr with a pull-up three. She's 0 for 4 to start her night. She had a slow start last season against UConn. Her last game was a solid one. On the road at Florida State, scored 29 points. That was a week ago tonight. Mikasa Robinson is a freshman. She's guarding Samuelson. Collier, the good move, but couldn't finish. 
Oh, nobody picked up Jasmine Jones, and Gino Arriba is going to remember that play. Good denial by Robinson on Samuelson. And a foul on Collier. Her second foul. Uh, you said it, Adam. The pressure of Louisville, the extension of it. Robinson came in in that Notre Dame game and did a great job of upping the pressure defensively. And what UConn has, has done, a steady diet here in the first half, is try to post up. That's what they've tried to do is post up. Coach Oriama frustrated on the sideline. He was telling us earlier today that he feels like Simferian could give it a little extra. To <laughs> I get think that's those what he, I think that's my, that might be what he's telling Mike Forsberg right now, in fact. Good defense by Williams on Durr. Tough shot by Fury. And good rebound by Walker. Samuelson. That was actually a really good defense by Fearing on that play, right? Like screen and transition, switch it, and still get the contest. And how about the rhythm jumper by Jasmine Jones, who's feeling it early? Here they come. At the young. They get a foul called here against Sam Fearing, her first. This crowd knows when to come alive. Yeah. Though. Everyone's standing right now. They can feel it building here and in, in the building. There was potential for this to be the largest crowd in Louisville women's basketball history tonight. And one of the great buildings that really amplifies the noise here at the KFC Yum Center where the Cardinals have gone 133 and 15 all time. They're 10 and 0 this season. Samuelson off to a good start. She's got eight. Dangerfield watching Durr, as you mentioned earlier, Kara. Unable to get on the board just yet through the first quarter, but that being said, Louisville's only down two. Evans. And a UConn foul against Kristen Williams, the true freshman. That's a good description of Dangerfield watching Durr because that's all she's watching. Yeah. <laughs> she's just face guarding her. Louisville in the bonus. And we'll head to the free throw stripe with Dana Evans. Two shots for Louisville, one. Evans has come in off the bench for all but four games this season. A couple out of experimentation and a couple out of necessity that she started but what a punch she delivers averaging nearly double figures off the bench yeah, i might have looked to get fearing out on that play just because she had picked up the one and not have her pick up the two on the free throw for the final position yeah, last the 30 seconds yeah. with a defensive possession coming yeah. up Dangerfield will trigger the deep three. Long rebound. And out of bounds, still time for Louisville with 3.5. But Dangerfield, she's got her back, uh, her hand on the back of Durr. She is staying right on her. Evans, this will count. Last year in stores, it was an 18 point UConn lead after one. Asia Durr did not score in the first yet. We're tied up at 21 through one. Then we'll talk about the rest of her game. But I uh, talked to uh, Olivia about that. She said it was really cool. Zion was great with her. And she's like, you know, I haven't thrown one down in a game yet here at UConn, but I can't wait to. She's got a double double this season. She's got five blocks in her last two games. That's a little bit of the spark that she brings in, Holly, off the bench in the front court. And they're going to need her because Nafisa Collier's got two fouls. Jasmine Jones has eight points, and Louisville's got its largest lead. UConn struggled to close the opening quarter. Two for their last ten. Collier playing with two fouls. Rimmed out. 
And it will stay here. For this big lineup that UConn is going with, Jasmine Jones now has the defensive assignment on Collier. Collier looking to take advantage of that. Remember, UConn's lone loss this season to Baylor. Baylor had the definitive size advantage in that game. What a smooth stroke by Dangerfield for her second three. In traffic, Durr forced it up and hit it to get on the board. The second leading score in the ACC. Well, the de degree of difficulty can be high, and Aza Durr still has the ability to make shots. <laughs> Walker to answer. Missed everything. Furing hits the deck to grab the loose ball. And here comes Louisville. Durr against Samuelson. The All-Americans square off, and Durr wins that one. Adona is blocked by Jones. Shot clock down to seven. Jones. Collier's got the rebound. That is the 1,000th career rebound for Nafisa Collier. Also closing in on 2,000 points. Aja Durr starting to heat it up. Yeah, she is starting to heat up. She started. To look at that shot. Wow. I mean, those defenders couldn't have contested it any better. And yeah, she leaves Katie Lou a little bit to the right. And then Jasmine Jones on the weak side against Nelson Adona. We just saw, saw highlights of her ducking. And I love it right there. <laughs> Let's go. Let's go. I bet you if Jeff Wall saw that, he'd go, hey, you know, the play's going on. The play's still going. <laughs> She's firing up the fans yeah. at home. Durr for three again. <laughs> Jadur. Nelson Adota silencer right there. Much needed for UConn. And you see Louisville still probing and pushing the pace a little bit. Durr, a deep one. That was a heat check shot. Loose to Jones. Evans had it blocked, I believe, by Samuelson. Look at Collier going coast to coast, feeding Nelson Adota, stripped by Jones out of bounds. High pace as expected. And a timeout's going to be called here. We'll step aside, Louisville, with a surge to take a lead. Thanks so much, guys. Louisville trailed by four early in this game. They've put together a quick spurt behind Asia Durr, and they've taken their largest lead at six. UConn basketball. Katie Lou Samuelson firing. Walker, good second effort and third effort. And grabbed by Louisville. Durr, the trailer for three. Around it out. Holly Rowe, what'd you hear in that UConn huddle? Well, Gino Oriamo was talking about Asia Dorr heating up for Louisville, and he said, you know, the only way we can get a great offensive player like that out of the game is get her in foul trouble. None of us are going at her when we have the ball. We have to make her work on defense. We have to make her foul her. If she's saving all her energy for the offensive end of the court, it's going to be a long night for us. She, he was particularly looking at Megan Walker. She scored early in this game, but she's been quiet lately. She's got to make her guard. Her. And Holly Asia Dorr picking up right where she left off. She's into double figures just like that in this quarter. 
this big lineup too. Megan Walker can get inside because Asia Durr has that defensive assignment. They gotta get the ball to Collier. And she's got the smaller Robinson on her and easily muscles it in. I mean, if they're gonna stay consistent with switching that screen at yep. the top, you just roll down, post up that guard, and either they foul or you get an easy layup like UConn did on that play. Jones seeking space. There's the long arm of Nelson Adota with the block. Second on the team this year with 18. Dangerfield behind the screen. Buries the three. She's got her third three of the night. Well, the length pays off defensively with Nelson Adota for UConn on that end. And this big lineup uh, has come with some good results for Gina Oriema. Dunham working hard, but Nelson Adota doing a good job guarding her in the post. Robinson had to force it up. It's a good defensive possession for UConn. Durr having to fight around the screen. It was punched out to Dangerfield, and from the ground, she nearly got it to Sanderson. Oh, there's some news out of the garden today. Talk How about to the me, big Adam, to me. How KP. about Dennis Smith? And a couple of picks going to the Knicks. Kristaps Porzingis going to Dallas. Kyrie Irving's coming to the Garden, by the way. Boston and New York. And then we've got James Harden taking on a triple-double machine. And Nikola Jokic, I love the doubleheader we've got for you on Friday night on ESPN. 30-point scoring streak, by the way, for Harden. 24 straight games. Here is Dunham. And Collier the rebound. I was shocked at the Porzingis trade. I was a little surprised, but maybe... Uh, Trying to turn New York into a free agent destination. Maybe Dallas is going to turn into a free agent destination. Doncic and Porzingis together. One point Louisville lead. What a drive by Evans. Nearly finished it. She wanted the foul on Williams with the contact. Walker on the drive into Fury. This game started with the Ooh. officials calling everything in the last few possessions. They've called nothing when there's been a lot of contact at both ends. Yeah. I'm good with it. <laughs> <laughs> this has been a fun 17 minutes so far. Durr can use both hands to dribble almost equally well. Furing a second chance. Dunham the third chance. Furing all the way off the bottom of the backboard. Huskies look for the lead. Well, Samuelson wants to shoot. And that will be a Dunham foul, her first. That's the first foul against Louisville here in the second quarter. Field with the scoop. Collier's there for the putback. Nafisa Collier's got six in the quarter. UConn's back in front. I didn't know about 16,000 people could be this quiet. There is some tension in this building tonight. Top three matchup. Evans, deep three. Her second three of the half, and Louisville's back in front by two. So important for Asia Durr to get the offensive support she's gotten so far from her backcourt mates. Tough shot by Collier, nearly got the friendly roll. Jeff Walls basically said he wants smart transition, smart pushing of the pace. If they can get a shot, a good one in the first eight seconds, do it. Otherwise, make UConn work on defense. How do you assess that so far? 
I think they followed the game plan well. There was a stretch where after Asia Durr hit those threes, where she took a quick one, and I think it was Evans that took a quick one, and, and Jeff Walls called a timeout after that, and I thought it was a good timeout just to reaffirm and to, to, to reemphasize, hey, this is how we want to play, and I think they've done a pretty good job of it, controlling the pace. And it's helped they haven't turned the basketball over too much, yeah. just two turnovers. That certainly helps with pace as well. The both teams have been relatively clean in that regard so far. Williams spinning, blocked by Durr, but a foul called. That'll be the first on Asia Durr, sending the freshman to the line. Kristen Williams made a name for herself when UConn and Notre Dame squared off in early December. She had a career high 28 points in that game. But the second big game that UConn played out of conference against Baylor, she had just eight points. Gina Wariyama said she has hit a little bit of that kind of typical freshman wall. Common for most players, uncommon for very few. I, I, I thought she was awful against Baylor until she made those two threes late in the third quarter. But to kept UConn yeah, alive I mean, in that I, game. I didn't think she played well. And listen, that happens. Um, not, not just to freshmen, that happens to, a lot to, of players, to sure. every player. Uh, through the course of the season, you're going to have good games and bad games, but they need her. Uh, they need her to, to play uh, at a very high level, and by the end of the year, I'm sure Gino R.A.M. would love to her, have her at that Notre Dame level consistently. What a shot by Asia Durr. Her fourth three of the quarter. She's got 14 in the period. Seven-second difference. Shot clock and game clock. Walker, good post move, just banged it up and in. Yeah, hold for one here. Yeah, shot clock is off. After getting blown out in the first quarter in stores last season, Louisville has played right with UConn the last five quarters they played. Asia Durr to Dana Evans to beat the buzzer. It'll be a Louisville lead into halftime. Welcome back to Louisville, Kentucky in our Thursday night showcase. Louisville with a two-point advantage as we get set for the start of the second half. Louisville has not beaten UConn since 1993. Adam Amin, Carol Lawson, Rebecca Lobo, Nikki's creeping down there as well. <laughs> so UConn's faced different challenges in these ranked matchups. What's the challenge they face tonight? Well, this is a measuring stick game. We talked about that in the open against Baylor. The challenge was the bigs. Well, today the challenge is the guards and how what adjustments will we see in the second half to counteract what Asia Tur has been able to do. One of the things I love about games like this is we see the players that have the ability to elevate their game yeah. to a different level. We saw the elevation in the second quarter from Asia Durr. Uh, she was terrific. And she doesn't have to have an on-balance foundation from a shooting perspective to still make shots. She doesn't have to have a clear line of vision and see the rim to still make shots. She hit these two threes against Connecticut zone, was able to bust them out of that zone, but she also, off the dribble, was able to attack, get into the guts of the defense. Beautiful flip of the pick by Dunham there to get their star player a clean look at the basket. 14 points, not bad for a first half. Held scoreless in the opening quarter, set fire to the net in the second. Let's check in with Holly Rowe. Well, Gina Oriam from UConn told me that they've got out of that zone on defense that they were playing early because he thought some of their young players were losing guys, getting lost a little bit. Said, I just went man so that they wouldn't have any confusion whatsoever. He also went to that big lineup. He thought Olivia Nelson Ododo gives them a much bigger presence. When she's in, they will play zone, but he said she's just got to be more aggressive and be a scoring threat when she is in that big lineup. And she did have a field goal in that first half. Holly, thank you. I actually loved everything about that first play. I love that Gino Ariema tried to pick on Erica Carter to see if she could pick up the third foul as Durr hits another jumper and stays hot. And I love the fact that Carter just stayed solid, which is what she didn't do in the right. first half when she picked up her second foul. Picked it up at the 3.30 mark of the opening quarter. She's guarding Samuelson here. UConn trailing to start the second half for just the third time this season. Collier with the lay-in. The only other times they trailed were the Big 12 opponents. Oklahoma in a game where they really got tested, had to come all the way back, led by Collier. And then that game against Baylor where they trailed at halftime and eventually lost their lone loss of the season. Nothing there for Carter. 
Jones fading and hitting. It's a double figure. Tough shot. Now Jeff Wall said this walking off the floor to Holly Rowe about the other players stepping up. Yeah. And I don't think that Asia Durr can carry them for 20 minutes in the second half with Dangerfield hanging all over him. They're going to need help. Only five points in the second quarter for Louisville from someone not named Asia Durr. Samuelson met at the summit by two defenders. A jump ball gives it to Louisville. Again, picking on Erica Carter, backing her down. Good help defense from Dunham. You got to send some help anytime a much bigger guard is getting down on in low, down low with Erica Carter. Now Samuelson has front court size playing in the backcourt. Still danger field, closely watching Asia Durr. Carter. Dunham in traffic gets the offensive rebound. Connecticut gives up 12 and a half offensive rebounds per game. Carter. Good box out by Walker. Samuelson. Little hesitation, got the space, and drew the foul on Jasmine Jones. That'll be the second on Jones. Samuelson showing off the skills. I thought, you know, she did a great job getting Jones in the air. I thought she had a clear line. I thought she was going to drive it, basket. right? Yeah. Three is more than two. <laughs> <laughs> Always remember Thanks, that. Thanks, Mike Dantoni. I appreciate it. Yes. <laughs> yes. I mean, if you just, it, I mean, it looks nice and it looks pretty to drive to the basket, but, you know, when you can spoke, shoot like spoke, she can. <laughs> spoken like someone who's been watching Bradley Beal the last sure. four months of the season. Congrats to my guy, Bradley yep, Beal. All-star nomination this year. Second time, right? Second time in his career. As Samuelson, rare to see her miss two at the line out of three. One of the best in the American Conference. Samuelson's got nine. It's a three-point game. Good job by Dunham. Just kind of floating back there and putting that big arm up to get the pass. It was a great back screen by Asia Durr. When you have a player draped on you, focused on you like she has danger field, use yourself as a screener. That seems like such a basic concept, but such an effective one. Williams. That's a little bit of the aggressiveness that Gino Ariema likes about her. Just enough space for Carter to take it in. Trying to force the pass, though. It'll go to UConn. Uh, the overreaction to Durr, and you see on the top side is Dangerfield. So she's effectively screening two players yeah. now. You call in the NBA they call it top lock when you get on the top side, and so that's a beautiful play design by Jeff Walls to take advantage of that coverage and have his post player come free. Nice pass by Collier to Samuelson, the two seniors hook up, and they ran it again the last time down, and they got a clear driving lane. We'll see. Are they going to run it a third time in a row? I would. Well, let's watch 25. Ooh, Dangerfield almost stole that away by herself with one hand. That was a slick move. But there is such skill on the floor tonight. It is really fun to watch. And I, listen, I know we're spoiled because we see a lot of the elite teams, but man, there is a high level of skill on the floor between these two clubs. Spoil me. Yeah, I'll tell. I mean, listen, I'm not going to apologize for it. <laughs> Furing to an open Carter for three. Here comes UConn searching for the lead. It'll be their first of the second half. Walker lost it. Only three turnovers apiece in this game so far. It speaks to what we were just mentioning, the high level of skill on the floor. Good take by Jones to set up Furing. And Dangerfield's got the board. You 
see the one seeds according to Charlie Cream. Collier misses. Notre Dame. Surprising loss to North Carolina. What a performance by Paris Key. 30 points, 10 assists for Sylvia Hatchell's team to knock off number one Notre Dame. They drop to number five this week. Asia Durr. Offensive rebound, Jones. Dunham. Good look and banks it in. Tension keeps building, and now they're letting it out here in Louisville. Williams flashes for three. Overshot it. Durr saved it. Kind of a no-look dangerous pass to Carter, who fights Fury and flips it in. some of the best teams in the country all day on ESPN. And how about the surging Chris Mack, Louisville Cardinals? They won six in a row, doing it at the defensive end as well. 16-5 and five record as North Carolina comes into town on Saturday, all part of a quintuple header you're not going to want to miss. Great feed by Dangerfield to Collier. Holly, you were behind that Gino Ariema huddle. What'd you learn? Well, you saw him call timeout. He wanted to talk to his players there, and he said, we talked about this in the locker room at halftime. We were going to come out and move and cut and move and cut. And then when we get the matchup we want, we're going to rip it and go to the basket. That's exactly what happened on that next possession. He said, let's get it moving. As they broke the huddle, he was like, let's move the ball. He just says, if we're standing around, we're playing right into their hands. They're not going to stand around and watch us. A foul on Kylo Irwin takes us to the media timeout. It's my favorite bucket of the game on the Louisville side on the fast break. Uh, forced UConn to call a timeout. Let's see awareness of Asia Durr, understanding where her teammates are, and then this is a pretty nice finish from Sam Furing as well. Asia Durr has done a really nice job finding other ways to be involved other than just scoring. You know, last year UConn played their one and a half defense. Whenever she touched the ball, have one and a half players on her. Here in the third quarter, when she's touched it, they've run two at her. And she's done a good job being a screener and a passer in this quarter. Three-point Louisville lead here. Durr being guarded by Dangerfield. There's that hedge by Kyla Irwin. Just trying to get it out of the hands, I would imagine, of Asia Durr. Right back to her for three. Doesn't need a whole lot of airspace, does she? Does UConn have a two and a half defense? <laughs> that might have been like a quarter defense on that one. It's an incredible shot. A size advantage for Samuelson, but she could not finish. Nelson Adota flips it out. Dangerfield to answer. Left it short. Louisville's got a six-point lead, their largest of the second half. You know, it's interesting on that contest. I thought Dangerfield, for a lot of the first half, did a great job of hard contests on dirt and her jump shot. She was just too far off. I know Evans you know, held her a little bit with the drive, but you got to shade toward Durr in that situation. Speaking of Evans, she knocks down a three to give Louisville its largest lead of the night. With Nelson Adota in the game, UConn's back to their zone, and Louisville's going to shoot them right out of it. Their ninth three of the night. Five on the shot clock. Collier stops, pops. Rebound for Shook. Two to play in the third. Cardinals smelling blood right now. Evans for three. A UConn crash in the glass. Better than 17,000 in attendance tonight at the KFC Young Center. A foul called on Kylie Shook. That'll be her third foul.
I know we've got a great high-level game for you right now. Stick around. We've got a high-level 30 for 30. Dion's double play. They premiered it the other night in Atlanta, focusing on the 24 hours in October of 92 when primetime played in game four of the NLCS in Pittsburgh and then played for the Atlanta Falcons in Miami the next day, came back that night to play in game five of the NLCS. Just awesome. Can't wait for you to see this tonight. Dangerfield knocks it down, and UConn back within seven. Dangerfield into double figures. Good set up by Evans for Fury. Long rebound snatched by Dangerfield. A good rebounding guard. She's just five foot five. Going to feed it to Collier. Picked up by Louisville. Inside of a minute. Asia Durr. Good defense by Dangerfield to get back. Carter for three. Louisville getting a little happy outside right now. Look at Samuelson going all the way down and posting up Carter immediately. And gets the two. Wanted the foul. Kind of slapped the floor in frustration a bit there. Louisville can essentially hold for the final shot with a one second difference. It's been a nice answer, a nice mini run by UConn yep. after Louisville took that nine point lead. Showed some toughness. A much less experienced UConn team than in recent years when they've made their runs to the final four. Durr, tough shot, somehow knocks it down on the move. Final seconds of the quarter. This will count for Dangerfield if it goes. Asia Durr and the Louisville Cardinals trying to do something they haven't done in 26 years. Beat UConn. They're up after three. We hate to break it to Jeff Walls, but he was about a thousand short. The largest crowd in women's basketball this season. 17,023 surpassing Lindsey Whalen's debut at the barn as the head coach of the Minnesota Gophers by almost 3,000. This is the fourth largest crowd in KFC Yum Center history since it opened in 2010, and Louisville's got the seven-point advantage as we hit the witching hour in the fourth quarter. Here's Nafisa Collier. Good flip by Collier for the two. Does so many things well. The second time here is in the second half that out of a timeout, UConn's going to, gone to Collier on the block. Yep. That's their steady player, their steady presence. They know they count on her for a consistent scoring. Durr, the one dribble pull up, could not knock it down. Megan Walker has been terrific on yep. the glass tonight. Double digit rebounds tonight. Samuelson off the screen. They left Collier open for three. Oh, big shot there. Ricochet to Furing, loose to Durr. Finds Carter. And Louisville did not force it there. Yeah, better patience by Louisville on that possession. This possession. Dangerfield eyes on eyes guarding Asia Durr. Shot clock's down to one. Evans will pull up. Shot clock violation. Yeah, it took too long to get in it and then disrupted a little bit by UConn defensively. Let's give credit where credit is due yeah. for the Huskies on that play. There's Collier to Nelson Adota. The two bigs teaming up. Collier with the offensive rebound, but lost it. Saved it on the deck. It'll go the other way to Louisville on the possession arrow. Nelson Adota's comfort is to go left in that dribble. The right side was wide open. She could have gone in for a layup. True freshman out of Winder, Georgia. Three times has scored in double figures. The number five player in the ESPNW rankings. UConn has won all 17 meetings since the first one back in the 93 NCAA tournament against Louisville. Walker, the hedge on Durr, gets called for her second foul. <laughs> 
Louisville with the five-point lead. Evans gets a good look for three. And extends the advantage to eight. Samuelson immediately goes down and posts up again on the smaller Carter. And a foul called on Erica Carter. That will be her third. Let's check in with Holly Roach. Well, you saw that graphic about how rare it is for UConn to lose to Louisville. They haven't done it. And Gino RM on his recent podcast was saying, you know, when other teams lose, it's in the sports pages or it might be on ESPN. It's on Sports Center. He said, I had a buddy call me and say, when UConn loses, it is so rare just once in the regular season in the last four years that it's on the CBS Evening News. Like, it's a <laughs> national news story for news people. So it is a very unusual thing, but Louisville's got to hang on here to make it happen. I read something that the folks in the Louisville papers are writing about today. He embraces it, though. There's something that he loves about this level of competition, and I would tend to agree. He says women's basketball needs these games. ESPN needs these games. It's good for the players, the coaches, and for somebody who doesn't watch this sport to flip it on and watch these two teams do what they've done tonight, that's a big deal in Gino Ariema's estimation, and I know a lot of us would agree with that. His team down by eight, though. The two seniors, no communication on that one. That's the second time, though. I mean, the other connection was Nafisa trying to throw it to, to Katie Lou. So, yeah, I mean, they, they haven't had many turnovers, but certainly back-to-back -back in critical spots for the seniors. Samuelson, that length defending Carter. Dangerfield on the drive, tough pull up. Tipped around, last touch by Fearing. We'll stay with UConn. <laughs> Bianca Dunham is going to come into the game, and Louisville will get a little bit bigger as Jasmine Jones comes out. Uh, they, they've, they've gotten beat up in the stretches that UConn is has played Nelson Adota in terms of on the front line. Yeah. And this is the bigger lineup, so a little bit more size. Yeah, so Carter now guards Walker instead of guarding Samuelson. Furing trying to guard Nelson Adota. Wow, what a rebound, but could not finish. Durr comes out of the pack with it. Lobbing for Dunham, what a play by Nafisa Collier. So skilled at both ends. In and out, Dangerfield using the glass. Collier too, and she's fouled. That'll be a Dunham foul, her second. Listen, I'm all for passing. I'm all for teamwork. I'm, I'm for all those things. I think they're important, and I think they're key to championship teams. Sure. Asia Durr shouldn't have passed that ball, okay? There are times throughout the course of a game when you're the best player that you have to make decisions that are best for your team. And if Dunham catches it, she might not even be able to finish it. You got to put her in a good position if you're going to make that pass. I think that's a pull-up jumper, or I think it's even a three in transition. But we're about 6.22 left in the game. The margin's under 10 points. At some point, if you're Asia Durr, you've got to start taking and being more aggressive and taking more on your shoulders here on the offensive end. And Dunham wasn't running to get the ball. She was running to yeah. take the defense so that Durr could do exactly yes. what you're talking about. Guys, UConn leaving points on the board. One of five in the second half from the free throw line. And it's been Samuelson and Collier missing free throws. That'll be a foul against Megan Walker, her third. <laughs> Dunham thought Asia Durr was shooting. <laughs> right? She's going to get the rebound. How about this? UConn has not lost more than two games in a regular season in six seasons. I'm going to go clean up Nafisa Collier. The knee was bleeding a little bit, so... Megan Walker will come over. I beg your pardon, uh, Michaela Coombs will come over. This is how frustrated Coach Oriam is with Kristen Williams. She's been on the bench a lot, even in this situation, not putting her in. Yeah, Williams stuck right now. Now Kyla Irwin will come in as well. Because what do you get? 30 seconds to deal with 30 it seconds before blood, you yeah. have to make a substitution? Yeah to deal with blood. Yeah, they're still dealing with it now. So Irwin and Coombs playing key minutes together. 
with Dangerfield, Samuelson, and Walker. Furing, kind of an awkward catch. That was a really tough spot for Furing, and she was out of bounds. Now, crowd wants a foul, but that's a difficult position to put your big in. Did I say that according to the script? Rebecca, just yeah. there. I just want to make sure. <laughs> Take care I just want to make sure. <laughs> well done, Adam. <laughs> Inside is six to play. Double teamed over here. Can't believe it. Samuelson beating Furing on the drive. Couldn't finish, and Furing clears. Right now, UConn needs a NASCAR pit crew over there to get. Collier to yeah. stop bleeding so you can get back in the game as quickly as possible. Yeah, he's finally going back to the scorer's table with that knee wrapped up. Dunham, tough take. Samuelson's got it. Either team lighting it up here in the fourth. Boy, how about Coombs driving in confidently but could not finish at the rim? Halfway through the fourth, Asia Durr taking the contact from Irwin, and she'll go to the free throw line. The problem for UConn in their loss to Baylor was their offense, not their defense. Adam, 53 points here. Yeah. And Asia Durr limping a little bit as she heads back towards the huddle. Timeout. You see Asia Durr stretching out that right leg. Remember, she did not play against Pitt on Sunday, was resting that knee, a little bit of tendonitis that she's been dealing with. Watch this last drive. And the following result, you see her kind of limping and grimacing after that play and was grabbing towards the back of that right leg. Holly Rhodes, did you learn anything new? Yeah, she's actually changed out her sleeve that she was wearing on the sideline. You see that was a black sleeve. She's got a white sleeve on now. I talked to her at shoot around today about that knee. She said, you know, it's kind of just an overuse situation. She was really bothered by that um, in their game Saturday. She has a little bit of swelling, but she's using a Norma Tech machine. She's using some new technology that puts magnets on your hands and you use it to move the blood and get that swelling down. She said, you know, we've been playing Thursday and Sunday. It's just been a lot of back-to-back, -back, and she's trying to be a little bit smarter about re her recovery. She didn't seem too worried about it, but that awkward landing certainly left her limping. And their next game is on Saturday on the road at Clemson, who's hosting Notre Dame tonight. Clemson's having a good year at 6-2 and two in the ACC. Ten-point lead, the largest for Louisville. Cut down by Collier and a foul. Kara, out of a timeout, where does UConn go? Once again, Nafisa Collier. On the left block. Yeah, and, and you know, this is this is someone that's just a tough matchup. And she has that fadeaway shot. And she's been the one player that they've been consistently able to get scoring from. Third foul on Jasmine Jones. So that was a much needed three-point play to end a five-minute scoring drought. A rare one for UConn. Five minutes a long time. Yep. You don't see that type, that length of drought very often. Carter, Furing, Evans, Durr, and Jones, the five for Louisville. Evans. Ooh, Michaela Coombs thought she was right there with her, but she picks up the foul. And again, Coombs has only averaged about 10 minutes a game this year. Not going to give you much in terms of offense. Is out there for defense, but is playing key minutes late in this game. The sophomore out of Buford, Georgia. And Adam, I know that we have a guard at the free throw line and, and a guard making the play, but credit Sam Furing on that last possession. She posted up hard the entire time, making Nafisa Collier guard hard the entire time, and that can have an effect and, and tire a player out, especially one that's a main focus on the offensive end. Four and a half to play in Louisville. 1993, the last and only time Louisville has ever beaten UConn. Here at the KFC Young Center tonight, it's been a back and forth game. Crystal Dangerfield off target. Dana Evans the rebound. Number two against number three, the third time the top three teams have met this season. Asia Durr comes to get it. Scoreless in the first quarter. And since then, she's cleared her season average per game. And here she is on the move. 
That was deflected by UConn, 10 to shoot. I do like the way Louisville's playing. Uh, the fact that they don't get a transition, they're using the clock and getting the ball in the hands of playmaking guards, whether it's Asia Durr or Dana Evans. Jeff Walls will call a timeout. We're back in 30 seconds, 10 of the shot clock when you return. Inside of four minutes remaining. 10 of the shot clock for the Cardinals on offense, leading by nine. You know this better than anyone, as far as different messages you know R.A.M. sends, and I think it's it's been striking that Christian Williams is uh, still on the bench right now. Well, I think Gino R.A.M. knows that he his team isn't going to win a national championship without Christian Williams being able to perform and perform in big moments. We saw her do that against Notre Dame, struggled against Baylor, struggling against again here. And yes, he's willing to send a message in the regular season if he thinks it's going to resonate and have an impact in the postseason. Feels like a big possession for Dangerfield and UConn. Unable to connect. Cleared by Carter. I don't think any of the 17,000 wants to bank on this game being in the books just yet. Still a long way to go. Loose out towards midcourt, and Coombs did grab it while she was out of bounds. I know there's plenty of time, as you just referenced, Adam, but at this point, three minutes, I do start to count possessions, right? I mean, three possession game. I mean, there's there's not many more possessions that at least UConn can come down Fair point. on yep. the offensive end and yep. come up empty because what Jeff Walls is doing, which I think is the right thing, is he's taking it down into 10 seconds, into five seconds into the shot clock to shorten this game. Down late in the clock for an Evans three. An empty possession for Louisville. A key one here for UConn. 2.50 to play. Dangerfield, free for three. The Huge shot. shot. Crystal Dangerfield, much needed. Down to a six-point game. It's a two-possession game now. And now the pressure being applied by Connecticut. Oh, Jones knew the trap was coming. Finds Evans. Evans to Fury. Catches and scores. Walker thought about it. Left it short. And here comes the largest crowd in women's basketball this season. Evans for three. Got it all! Dangerfield, a crucial bucket, and a timeout called by Gino Ariema. Down to a nine point game with 101 seconds remaining in Louisville. Don't forget, we've got Dion's double play coming up. At the top of the hour, our 30 for 30, and then Sports Center following it. Michael Leaves and Zubin Mahenti will talk about the impact of the Kristaps Porzingis trade to Dallas. Stephen A. Smith will have his reaction. You'll want to stick around for that. Plus the latest on Jason Garrett's future as the Cowboy head coach. And a top 10 prime time Deion Sanders countdown. All coming up with Mike and Zubin, my guys, when we finish up with Deion's double play. I, I want to talk about... Dana Evans, because yeah. what she has done tonight in terms of making three-point shots is something she couldn't do a season ago. And we talked a lot about this meeting last season and what Louisville lacked. And they lacked other players that could step up and make shots outside of Asia Durr. And so you look at a kid that shot 22% from three a season ago, and with tonight's numbers, is up over 40%. Spent a lot of time in the gym working on her jump shot, and it's paying dividends in Louisville's biggest game of the season. Dana Evans, blue collar. Her dad, Damon, a steel mill worker in Gary, Indiana. Her mom, Shwanda, a factory worker in Gary, Indiana. They met while playing college basketball at South Suburban in Illinois. Evans out there with Jones, Carter, Durr, and Furing. A veteran lineup. And Samuelson gets called for a foul, and she was saying that Jones hooked her to get around her. She thought it should have been an offensive foul. 
UConn, remember, they've won 133 of their last 144 regular season games. The loss came against Baylor at the beginning of the month. It is headline news when UConn goes down because it is such a rarity. I'll be curious what Charlie Cream would think about this game because Oregon, a team that is right on the cut line for the one seed. Mississippi State has played great basketball, outscoring their opponents by the largest margin in the country. NC State's the only unbeaten on the men's or women's side in college basketball in D1. Let's see how this game affects them going forward, but still a month plus to go before selection time for the NCAA tournament. Durr and a smart timeout from Jeff Walls as Durr was in trouble. You know, it's interesting you talk about that because one of the things that we talked about at the turn of the of the year for UConn was that they had three opportunities, like huge non-conference opportunities, yeah. to get wins. Uh, one was against Baylor, yep. one was against Louisville, and one is to come against South Carolina. And how important markers those were for UConn because uh, of the relative ease with which uh, they, they go through their American Conference schedule. And so when we're looking at those three games right now, we've called the first one. They weren't able to go into Baylor and win. It doesn't look like they're going to be able to go in Louisville and win. So I think that puts some pressure on that South Carolina game from a seeding and from an NCAA tournament perspective for UConn. Yeah. Remember, they have the strength of schedule right now sitting at number 30 in the country. 1-17 all-time Louisville against UConn. Jeff Walls 0-14 against Gino R.E.M. on the Huskies. And a foul on Furing. He's an 80% free throw shooter. Louisville is in the bonus. And Gino Ariema, I, I think you guys made a great point, especially about Kristen Williams, willing to send a message tonight. He said about as much to us earlier today as well. He knew how good Louisville was. He knew that this could be a game where UConn walks out with a second loss. But he also said something I was perked up by in my ears. He said, I think we're still in a good place. And I think he meant mentally and in development phase. So that's an interesting comment from Gina. Well, unlike the fans, the UConn fans, Coach Royama understands the significance of a regular season loss. Yes. Here is Williams, the aforementioned freshman. And Sam Furing in traffic gets tied up. It'll be UConn ball on the possession arrow with less than a minute to play. You can see Jeff Walls believed it should have been a foul. Good look for Dangerfield. Danced off the rim. And a foul called on Walker as Jones snared it. And now they're starting to feel it. Jasmine Jones was a wide receiver and cornerback playing flag football with the boys growing up. Her dad, Reginald, the football player at FIU, and he played for the Cowboys in the NFL. Hard-nosed, tough player out of Tallahassee. Sure is a different year in women's college basketball. How about it? And it's been exciting and fun, and who knows who's going to be in the <laughs> Final Four this year. Baylor is number one right now. They took over the number one ranking. It's the first time in six seasons we've had three different number ones before the start of February. Notre Dame, UConn, and now Baylor. Buckle up, baby. This is going to be a fun seven weeks on the way to the NCAA tournament. Collier finishes, and Gino Ariema will use one of his remaining timeouts. Well, we talked about the UConn perspective. Let's talk about what this means historically for the Louisville Cardinals, a program that has done tremendous things. They've been to two national championship games, falling to these Huskies a couple of times in some lopsided games. But you talk to anybody around this program or in this city, there was a different buzz around this game tonight, not just because UConn was in town for the first time in five years, but because I think a lot of people believe that this could be a win for Louisville tonight. And they have responded very impressively against one of the best to ever do it, and certainly one of the best teams in the country this year. 
and, and I also think it's not just the Louisville program, Jeff Wall, yeah. who has not head to head beaten Gino Ariema. And I, I think that's important for Louisville's mindset going into the NCAA tournament. This is a team that's good enough to win a national championship. You can tell yourself that, but a win like this, I think solidifies that in a program's mind and in the players' minds that they have the ability to do it. And, and all the Louisville players not named Asia Durr who have stepped up in this bit, in this game to have a big performance, yep. especially some players who did not shoot well in the Notre Dame game, but have really come out and performed well here today. Jones and Evans in particular. Yeah. Collier picked up her fourth foul, sending Asia Durr to the free throw line. Slow start. All 23 points coming since the start of the second quarter. They've won big tournament games. As we mentioned, they've been to the championship game a couple of times under Jeff Walls, but this is going to go down as one of the great wins in Louisville women's basketball history, done in front of one of the great crowds in Louisville women's basketball history. Yeah, I think this gets lost a little bit in the heroics of Notre Dame from a season ago, Adam, but yep. Louisville lost a heartbreaker in that yeah. semifinal last Absolutely, season to yeah. Mississippi State. I Overtime. mean, they very easily could have been in, in the national championship game against Notre Dame, a team they were very familiar with, a team that they throttled on this court a year ago. Right. And so when you look at motivation, you know, that, that can get lost a little bit. I think this team is motivated to get back to the final four and win it all. Without question. And, and we've talked about this too, about how teams that have been to the final four and have that experience are more of the favorite to win the national championship. Sure. Jeff Walls has experience there. All of these players have experience of playing in that moment and in that environment. And right now, you know, they're, they're as much as any team a, a favorite to get there and win the whole thing. This doesn't necessarily have to apply to this Louisville team, but how do you think teams battle through a heartbreak like what Louisville experienced last year? We know UConn's dealt with it a couple of times in a row now, but how do you think a team like this would respond? Or how would you like to see them respond to your app? You know, I've always felt like it's a good touchstone point and it's a good galvanizing force in the offseason and in your preseason workouts. And uh, But that's Erasing something that's a part of your history, I don't think can be your sole motivation. I think it's got to be your desire to create something new or to do something for the first time, which would be for this Louisville program to win a national championship for the first time. They have to feel right now and, and after this game as if, man, we can win a national championship. Like yeah. a true belief. Even yep. if you believed it coming into this game, you believe it even more because of what UConn stands for. Well, I think that goes back to your point too, Kerry. You need those benchmarks to feel like you've hit a goalpost, you've hit a milestone, and then you advance from the beyond that. There were nine top 25 teams tonight that were hitting the road. This was not an easy night on a loaded women's basketball schedule. Notre Dame was on the road at Clemson. Mississippi State heading to Baton Rouge tonight. Big game with South Carolina headed to a top 20 team in Kentucky. This was a loaded schedule tonight. NC State, the only unbeaten, is on the road tonight as well at Wake Forest. But this was the headliner. This was the marquee matchup. And the Louisville Cardinals trying to ice this one at the free throw line. Sam Fearing, one of the emotional centers of this team. It's Louisville back up by 10. Samuelson and Collier exchanging, and that's the first points of the fourth quarter for Katie Lou Samuelson. This game's not done yet. Still a seven-point game, three-possession game. And Evans is fouled by Williams. You can tell that the fans aren't ready to believe it just yet. <laughs> <laughs> like there's again, they're standing. I mean, they're yeah, standing, yeah. but they're they're yeah. like it's a quiet. I don't know if you can be quiet at 17,000 in the building, but it's like it's arms a, it's a, crossed with it's apprehension. A right? It's a tense 17,000 right now. All these missed free throws are uh, adding to that nervousness.
never seen a court stormed in women's basketball. You think we'll have that? Yeah. Well, if you're going to do it, isn't tonight the night to yeah, do it? Right? <laughs> I don't know if three over two is a court storm. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean listen, I understand where, where both of you guys are coming yeah. from from that perspective. Samuelson off target. Rebounded by Jones. Fouled by Dangerfield. And now they're ready to celebrate. UConn, which has never lost a game against an American Conference opponent, headed to Cincinnati, not too far away from here in Louisville. Watch out. This is going to be an angry UConn team. Come a couple of nights from now, Jeff Wall's team has to turn it right back around after what looks to be an emotional win tonight. They've got to go to a very difficult environment against Clemson on the road Saturday. <laughs> Final seconds. Dangerfield, no good. And for the first time in 26 years, the Louisville Cardinals have defeated UConn. The first win for Jeff Walls over Gino Ariema. For Holly Rowe, Rebecca Lobo, Carol Lawson, and our great crew, Adam Amin, sing so long. Let's get you to Shanae Ogumake and the crew.